nationality, somebody's a fraud. Wow. It's a consciousness. Paperwork only backs up what everybody is already obligated to. And remember, when you're issuing paperwork, you're, you wouldn't ask me. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. It's like you boxing, right? And you ain't been boxing for a minute, right? right. And so he started telling me how, you know, you know how I move like this and stuff like that. And I said, well, uh, it's cool. Well, how do I do? Get the paperwork so I can punch him out. It don't work like that. It's a consciousness and an ability. In other words, understand that collectively, we have, as a people have been held outside of the constitutional fold of government. Therefore, those fundamental things of civics have not been part of our culture. However, it's a part of everyday human life, irregardless of us being absent of it. In other words, for generations, we're preoccupied with idol god worship while the re rest of the civilized world will deal with reality. That's our disadvantage. You must know that. And so you must understand that your lack of consciousness is what the problem is. In other words, the paperwork means nothing if you can't defend it. You understand? And remember this, and it's not an excuse, I'm just, because I need you to be honest because you asked the question. As soon as you put out a piece of paperwork and you're not adept in it, recognize it's no different than this wall's Goliath, right? So you schooled me, right? Oh, wow, yeah. Goliath, he's the one that took my peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah. Hey, G. Oh, um, I heard you, you know, took my peanut butter sandwiches and stuff. You know, do the old glove thing like they right. do on TV. Right. And I'm walking back over here like I'm chilling. Like this is, like I just got things together right here. Give me five minutes. Like I got things together, right? A lot of people ready to come back and hook me up. See, because when you do like this, yeah, G. Oh, you got my stuff, huh? Yeah, my boy told me you got my stuff. So my paperwork's right here. You're going to get a response. So because what happens if your consciousness ain't there? The paperwork means what it means it does, but a paperwork is what? Any paperwork is a brief. A brief that represents a larger body of knowledge. When it's challenged, they're going to be testing you on the larger body of knowledge. Do you understand? This is why it's always said, in long history, man, know thyself. So when you know thyself, you say, hey man, what's up, man? And I go, hold on, man. Wait a minute, man. Just a minute. Read this, man. And you read that. Oh, stuff. Oh, snap. Mickey D's your cousin. Better not mess with you. It ain't gonna roll like that. And I'm only telling you because when I travel the country and I hear people who ask them about paperwork, they come from the concept that that paperwork makes them. Or somebody trying to sell them a package. Or something like that. Birthright and nationality is free. Can't, it's in your blood. Hold your left hand up. Take your two fingers right here. The other hand. Put it on your wrist. No, the other way. Front, back, like this. Feel the pulse. Be quiet. Chill down till you feel the rhythm of the universe. Feel the pulse? That's called blood. In politics, it's called consanguine relationship to your forefathers. It's the honor of your mothers and fathers. You honor your mothers and fathers? Yeah. Who are they? Henry Willis and... Uh, is, who are they? Yeah. parents. You already lost them all. You see the problem? Do you, do you understand? Yeah. Your forefathers are the ancient Moabites. You're direct descendants of them. And your argument is the birthright, the inheritance, the vast estate that's been under occupation by Europeans. That's nationalization. If you don't know that, you're listed as incompetent. I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating to you to show you where I'm trying to put you at. I'm not dismissing what you're saying. I'm informing you what you're supposed to know. So how do I get to know all this stuff? That's why you're here. 
Y'all That's why you go to any class. Y'all gonna be here permanently? Huh? We're gonna be coming here every Wednesday. All right, perfect. Now, basically, I'm listed to be in Harlem tonight. But um, I canceled that class to do this because Dooley's starting to cycle up again. And anyway, and boards and everything, you know, because the information is too too important. And um, but the point I'm making to you is in the real world. Uh, this is why, redundantly over the years, as we're dispensing this information, I'll remind people of certain fundamentals about status, what the status is, what it is not, uh, identity, how it stands in law, you know what I mean? And these things are your basics. Now, because we can't, like, it ain't like we've got all the energy and the institutions to, you know, take the smut off your mind and give you a new mind. It doesn't work like that. You have to be open to the information. And so, like any other body of information, which is like if you're planting a garden, you got to prepare the soil and plant the seeds, but they have to grow. They grow at their pace. They don't grow because it's needed. And those are people need a lot of remedies. It doesn't resolve just because you give them a document. What you'll find that one of the problems that most of our people have, even with the documentation, is that they start issuing the documentation, then as soon as they get a response from Rome, then they run around all over the country looking for a class to back up them documents when the person who sold them them documents violated them right. because they're in the business of making a living for themselves and that's not what this information is for. This information is for redemption. It's a reality check. It's to unplug you from the artificial matrix. And it's not a joke. And it's not to be played with, and it can't be sold, because then we're in dishonor. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Um, I'll repeat this when the others come. Do you know the foundation of the politics in the Western Hemisphere, and particularly North America, that creates the condition that we're in right now as to why we're even doing this? An outline, just a general outline, a foundation. Meaning that if there's opposition to a right that you have, you must know the opposition. If we're playing chess, you don't have to be an expert, but you have to have some kind of understanding of the moves that are on the board. You've got to know what a knight is, what, he moves, what the moves are. A rook, which is also called a castle, what his moves are. The king and the queen on the board, what their moves are. The value of the pieces. Do you understand what I'm saying? The pawns what their moves are, the bishops, what their moves are. Because you can get amateurs, but if you don't know the basics, they're going to kick your butt. And if they win, they, if you win, they probably let you win to get you encouraged to keep playing some more so they can beat you in a vital game. And this is pretty much how it works. But roughly, this is what I'm saying to you. Uh, a lot of people look at this information um, I'm not condemning it. I'm saying the way it's been presented to them wrongly. But, um, and so I'm qualifying what I'm saying. Um, because people are used to information pre being presented to, to them in belief concepts and in clubism type concepts, they usually come to this information in the same mentality. It's wrong way to think. However, I do know it's been dispensed that way. But what it is, it causes misinformation. It's no different than um, Bethano having that camera. You understand? And then not understanding whether it's digital, whether it takes a disc, what size disc, whether it's battery operated, how long the battery life is, or whether he needs to plug it in. And even then, not knowing how to use the viewfinder, but he got the camera. And... and, and in the real world, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And, and, and uh, so therefore, in law, in civilization, as an example, our people are constantly boasting in all kinds of organizations about the great Afrocentric kings and queens, and we come from a line of kings and queens. And then when you talk to our people, get them off their high horse, their arrogance, they only know the basics of government. As soon as you talk government to them, they keep saying it's the Europeans. 
That's thorough incompetence. In other words, they, by training, been throwing a baby out the bathwater because they really don't know culture. They've just been repeating things because somebody said it and it sounded good. And it was deeply Afrocentric. Well, Africa's a modern name. Most of them don't know that. Now, understand the ones who are ruling you know better. <laughs> and most of the misinformation is coming either from them or people who they've trained to interrupt your development. It's called overseers. And most overseers tell you a little truth to track, to attract you, then take your lunch money. Right. Then send you out there, you're a guinea pig. Meanwhile, they treat the information as if it's theirs and you're buying it. When it's a birthright, it belongs to each and every man, woman, and child. And should be dispensed just in that concept. Meaning that if I'm giving you this information, I'm only giving it to you to guide you to a consciousness. I'm not giving you something that's mine. I'm giving, sharing back with you something that is a birthright that belonged to you before you were born. And if it's not given in that concept, whoever's given it is a liar and a thief. It doesn't mean they're not telling you certain truths. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. And I'm saying that to you protect, to protect you. Because when you come in what you call green like you are, to opportunists, you're a big red taffy and they're getting ready to lick you. You're, and you need to know that. Because this is the real world. And don't think that everybody that wears a turban and a fez on, that has a turban and a fez, or somebody said they're Moorish American, or they're from Great Seal, or from the temple, the Moorish Holy Temple Science, the Old Canaanite Temple, the Moorish Science Temple, don't think that they're necessarily here to raise you. Most people came into this movement, I'll tell you honestly, to rape the people. They didn't come in here with honor. This is the reason why we're, that you're even having these classes now, because basically the, the concepts that I'm presenting to you and that I will be presenting to you tonight and at other times should have been taught 50 years ago. It wasn't because it was a great seller. And logically, it's an uncomfortable condition or position when you have to critique your own, particularly when you're not in a great position yourself. You know, how you say, you ain't got two nickels to rub together, but you talking about someone else's ain't got two nickels. Well, that's the kind of situation we're kind of in. But we don't have two nickels because they done robbed us. But to fix everything, you got to tell the truth. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, the ego has to be pushed aside. We have to acknowledge what our condition is and deal with it from a real world because the real world doesn't excuse you for not knowing. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm just presenting that to you. Let me give you some scenarios. Do you know anything about the Treaty of Verona between King John of England and Pope Innocent III during the Spanish Inquisition, say 1213 AD? That's the foundation of all your politics as they are swayed to the negative on the planet called Earth. And particularly in the Western Hemisphere, and particularly North America, the North Gate, which you'll hear secret societies saying they're Shriners or Keepers of the North Gate. The North Gate is the cosmological name for North America, which is the seat of the Moroccan Empire that was overthrown as the world has turned from the ancient Moabite Canaanite nations into Roman hands and as the foundation of all Masonic secrets. Do you understand? So when you're going out into the world and you don't know the foundation, don't think that you're going to fool that magi in the black robe who's sitting in the east at the desk calling himself a magistrate. Because they're not playing with you. They're here to steal your birthright. And if you don't understand it, don't think that you're going to get some piece of paper and play with him. Because the whole politics of the world is based on you knowing yourself or not knowing yourself. And you taking a positional stand on knowledge, not emotion. You understand? And even though you are at a, a compromised position, if your basics are in order, the rest kind of falls in place. You can be compromised, but you don't, you're not confused about your noble title. You're not accepting it because I or anyone told you. You'll be dealing with it because you know who you are. And it'll reflect a whole different energy when you're dealing with Rome. Because he knows when people went to CVS and copied something or down 7-Eleven. Or somebody sold you a package and that it's really you or not. Because it must be you. Which means without it, you can defend it. That's nationalization. The paperwork only backs it up. 
So like in law, like so he goes, who are you? Wait a minute, man. You're the magistrate, right? Who are you? Hold on. See, because according to, hold on. And, and I think it's, he already knows you're incompetent. And it doesn't mean that what you're saying is not correct. Your demonstration indica indicates there's a juvenile mentality going on right there. Because a man just, who are you? You just say your name like casual, let's, what's next? Now who are you, mine for yours, what's up? What are we discussing? I mean, it's like that, it's just normal. In other words, let it become normal to you. Then the paperwork has meaning. Because the real issue of the paperwork is an initiation of an action. An initiation of correction of status. But then, when you get the paperwork, you're supposed to already know that. You don't need to ask me or anyone else. And if somebody's given you that and didn't school you first, they're cheating you. But often they'll do that because, you know, after all, we all catch in hell. And you can take advantage of people who don't know with this information because they're compromised and you can live quite a comfortable life at their expense while they're going through the learning curve. Get the point? Yes. Because the issues that we're dealing with are national issues. Therefore, the forum Islam system that must resolve this is a national forum. That's nationality, isn't it? So that means it's Rotarian in its complexion, doesn't it? That means it's universal in character. Therefore, the principles that would be addressed would not be something unique to us necessarily other than the fact that we the only ones been out to lunch. That's the only thing unique about this information, that we are the only ones been out to lunch. Don't ever get it twisted that others don't know just because they ain't had the conversation with you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So understand when you step out into the world, this is expected to you as, of you as a normal process of communication. And when they see you, you don't know, they're not going to say it to your face, but you're incompetent. Now, my position with this is, I try to do the best that I can, even with all my flaws, to make sure that anyone who comes to our class knows the basics, because I already know if the basics ain't there, they can give you a whole bunch of other stuff and you'll fail. They're going to battle you when you're right. Don't go out there battling when you ain't right, because you're almost guaranteed to lose. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to get some wins. I want to try to prepare people to at least go 50% to 75% wins, or to lock up the system so they can't screw you, and then being able to sue them when they start trying to screw you. That's what indicates that you know what your rights are. Do you understand? Birthright. right. Now, universally, when a right is abridged or stolen, what is the remedy all over the world? That's how you fix it, but there's a, when I said remedy, it's called suit, all over the planet. So when you're dealing with suits, therefore you're dealing with uh, civics, aren't you? If you're dealing with civics, you're dealing with civilization, aren't you? Because there's rules, aren't there? So if your mothers and fathers are the founders of civilization, and we keep saying that, and we don't understand civics, which is the science of government, what does that indicate when you're going out into the world and you're throwing papers around that are rooted in civilization? <laughs> do, you see, do you see what I'm trying to say to you? I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm trying to put you on the right path. It doesn't matter who gives it to you. If you know the rules, you can take it and fix it. Do you see? Yeah. Other thing that you must let, so um, let me put this to you. Uh, today. Now understand it doesn't mean that other things are not involved. Do you understand? 
I'm giving you a foundation of what's in operation that has countered you, us, that has put us in the condition we're in. And when we're addressing different other things and are not aware of these things, it puts you at a disadvantage because those who are in positions of authority are taught this information in secret societies. They're already prepared. So when you underestimate or think that they don't know or they don't understand your feelings, they ain't interested in your feelings. I'm a man, you know. Please, don't even go there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because they ain't sitting around feeling sorry for you. After all, we the ones that sit around, you know, after we didn't just say something, do a libation and stuff, and start doing push cards and talking about our special relationship with God, Allah, and Jesus, and Muhammad. Well, if you know all that, you certainly should know the basics of civilization. And what does it indicate in our actions? That we don't. So you can kind of understand how people look at us with a certain amount of disrespect. They don't have to necessarily show it, but even other Asiatics that come from Africa, that side, and other people, why they get this kind of opinion that our people don't want nothing. But they don't understand because they look at certain economics that we may have in, you know, some hands in and assume that it's reflective of our knowledge and really we're just well trained to do certain jobs and under the impression that we know. And so some other people come from other countries, see that confidence that we have and assume that, hey man, I want to be like them until they start talking to us. Do you, 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 you understand what I'm saying to you? And discover that we didn't take our riddle in this morning. You know, and then after a while it takes them a few minutes to start realizing that we're sick. And don't know we're sick. And we can fight and we're arrogant. And self-righteous. And judgmental. So you can kind of understand it. It won't take them too long to start letting us stew in our nigger juice, putting a glass between them and the animals who don't know their animals, and live off their birth like everybody else. After all, they're going to accuse them of racism too because they, they don't know there's only one race on the planet. So what are you going to do, argue with them? Do you, I mean, do you understand? They don't even know what's going on. Meanwhile, they're going to tell you their special relationship with Jesus and Muhammad and Allah and looking at like you like you ain't, you don't know what's up. So therefore, your, your eyes are not seeing the way they're seeing. They're seeing with this tunnel, self-righteous tunnel vision and judgmental vision. Babies are dying younger on the street, but they telling them they're saved. What do you do with a being like that? Meanwhile, they're telling you they're kings and queens of the earth. Don't even know how to counter a ticket. Don't mean you ain't going to get them. Well, see you on the dark side of Mars. There's a face that's red a black man. Ain't no black man on Mars. That's a brand that Europeans made up in the 1700s. How are you going to take it and make it retroactive in history? And then the world look at you like you legitimate. They know that you say that kind of stuff because they taught you. Indicator of what? Incompetence, isn't it? You see what I'm saying to you? I'm, told, I'm giving you little subtleties. Right. Meaning, and what I'm trying to present to you is have respect for your opponent. Don't disrespect your opponent just because they ain't been nice to you. Do you, you know, don't disrespect them. Because they're living off your birthright. In other words, they ain't ruling because, you know. <laughs> See that one right there? It ain't all about like that. You understand what I'm saying to you? And so they're not going to really sit and have a rational conversation with you and talk about, well, you see, when you was freed in 1865, what they did in 1868 is created the 14th Amendment. And then they created the four, the, the artificial person, in which they categorized everybody that's called Negro, Black, and Colored as foreign corporate persons to make them taxable to the Inquisition Service so that we can still share crop all their property. I'm not going to give you a little more on that, but they're not going to say that to you, are they? So no Drawley came to school to. What happens if you reject that? I mean, that's only part of it. And what else happens if you don't know that? You suffer. 
you start getting caught up in this idea where we can call ourselves whatever we call ourselves and legitimate at law. No. Whatever you claim in the law of evidence, whatever you claim is what you are. And if it ain't real to life, you fail in the law of evidence. And when you fail in the law of evidence in identity, your status is already neutralized. And status determines a person's capacities or incapacities to claim rights, property, and an estate all over the planet. Those are basic rules. Guess what occurs if you don't know those rules because you just discover that you're more and you start saying that, but yet your consciousness does not have a foundation. Falls apart upon a challenge. Do you understand? It's why you hear uh, terms and it confuses people who don't have a background when they hear uh, people will say, no, Drali says, um, I want active mores, not passive mores. And statements like, um, you know, if you're not going to do anything with this information, or if you don't believe that this program that I have for the people and the citizens is right and correct, go to those who know law, to your government officials. Right? And he says, I want active and not passive mores, which means consciousness is not good enough. So a lot of people think just because they're Moorish Americans and they go get a document, now they're free. Don't work like that. You know, and so... There's certain fundamentals, and it takes finance to raise a nation, but any time finance is moved other than direct service, it's moved in a treasury that's under national auspices, with national structure, with bylaws, and is accounted for. It's, it's never some individual that's not related to a national principle who got a little business going on for their personal stuff, and you trying to buy something that's national, that's a conflict of interest. It's a conflict of law. You understand? Know in other words, you can't go down there to Metro or to T-Mobile and buy Chinese nationality. It's not how it works. And if you look at the Moorish nationality principle, you'll see the people of countries have been taking it just like that. But people who come in don't know because they don't know better. They don't have a background. So they can make a nice piece of change for a minute until you wake up. And of course, after people wake up, that's why you see a lot of divisionism when they start seeing they've been had, they've been played. Because <laughs> truth doesn't come in versions. I mean, say um, a, Chi a, a Chinese or Manchurian from uh, Sichuan territory, um, and say somebody from the South, um, they may not know each other personal, personally. But when they travel the world, when they go out into the world, people are not uh, interested in if their territory is, is Muslim and another part is, is um, Confucius, which they all have. When it comes together, that's a side. They're dealing with their international, civic, constitutional principle, and that's what they're measured by, universally. And so no matter what they're doing in their little clubism, when they step out into the world, they'll remember the relations that bind them to love and unity and their birthright. They'll never come here and say, you hear two Chinese brothers sitting up here and one saying, all right, brothers, tell them who you are, man, what are we doing? Well, I'm a light-skinned yellow guy looking for the light-skinned yellow rights. I'm a dark-skinned yellow guy, and soon as they're already dismissed in law. They don't have no birthright. They have no honor. Our people do that all over the world with other people and wonder why they reject them. Because they keep thinking that crayons are real. They think that human beings are crayon. So if you're gonna talk about property and rights, a lodial title, it doesn't apply to you already. And if those things aren't understood, there's no need giving you nationality papers. It's only gonna create problems for you. Then you're gonna be calling on the phone every two, two minutes trying to catch somebody trying, hey, what do I do, man? I smacked him in the head with a tootsie roll. Now he wants to hit me with a log. Not understanding that is the problem. You know what I mean? Train, study, and that's that's basically the point. You understand what I'm saying? So not that you wouldn't worry about papers, but don't worry about papers. Take notes. Put it this way. Um. While you're thinking, the worst world has been operating on this knowledge forever. That's what the economy is based on. You. 
So look at it like, um, don't underestimate this information. And don't get played on either side. One of the problems that we have is that people think that connotative slavery, because it doesn't mean what people think it means, it's really nice now. But um, don't think nobody knows who you are. And don't think this wealth is just there because somebody had a job and you didn't. Foundation. Now, of course, you know you got the Christian black codes. You got um, these. I'm giving you some that you're not necessarily familiar with, but you need to know about. Um, we're not going to talk about the battles. I might talk about them verbally, but I'm going to, since it's a small board, I'm stick with things that I. If you don't know what I asked you, I figure you don't know these, so I'm going to put them up there for you. This is not necessarily in order. These are just things that you need to know. All right? And you need to know what these are about. And the reason you need to know what these are about is because this is what operates the politics. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you want to argue with these people talking about your rights, and your identity and stuff, you need to know what they're operating from that's in opposition to what you're trying to achieve. Therefore, you must know the truth about your nationality and birthright. There's politics behind it. You, do you, you understand what I'm saying? It's not just saying, well, we're Moorish Americans. And the prophet came and brought us Islam. Oh, that's cool. It's just preliminary information to get you started. I said, that's just putting skates on, but we had the skating rink. You don't stand there just rolling the wheels like that going, whoosh, how steep. You know, put them boys on. It's that big circle. Everybody's rolling around there. All cool enough. Guess what? Start off, but guess what? It ain't going to stop because you can't skate. <laughs> if you get the kind of point where I'm trying to say. And so when the world looks like, you know, some people have compassion for you, but in general, they can't sit around babysitting right. you. If you come to the skating ring, put the skates on. You understand what I'm saying? You come to the world of politics, talk about nationality, nations deal with jurisdiction on earth, and guess what? They come together, even when they are arguing on universal principles of law. It's called international law. You know fundamentals of international law? But you want nationality papers. See the point? Because that's introduction to the forum. As soon as you throw it out, you get attention. You know, it's like somebody like this, right? You throw this eraser, right? I'm over here. Who did that? You got my attention. However, we're going to deal, we go from there, but you got my attention. When you throw them papers out, Who did that? Me, because I got some rights. Oh, you discovered that uh, you've been working on the plantation. You thought it was over, huh? So now they're gonna try to put you back in the basket. So now you gotta defend what you threw out there. Because everything is, we ain't gonna necessarily get like the slave map, so you ain't gonna go, no, oh, man. He ain't gonna work, he's gonna work with bonds. You understand what I'm saying? With warrants, with chattel mortgages, which are called prime loans. And if you don't know what these instruments are, and you start out working out there, you say, yeah, man, I know I'm more sure. Sure you do. But well, it's a little bit more than that. It's now. It's now. It's a little bit more than that. Do you understand? Um, I'm going to start back over again.
be, to, to share with y'all. You got paper and pencil? You look fired up already. Now, we're going to go over the mortgage again because, um, let me say this too. This is the basic mortgage that, that shut the banks down. And people have used it in various forms, but this is the basic mortgage that shut the banks down. You know, for the mortgage foreclosures. And logically, a lot of people used it and then start studying after the fact. The reason I had put it on the website, because it's a lot of dirty mores that keep on selling people packages and birthright, and then the people can't defend them. Meanwhile, they're taking fiat from them, knowing that our people are strapped already, and also knowing that birthright can't be sold. Doesn't mean that serving in worthy is higher. I'm not arguing that. You understand? But when you're dealing with rights, you must first understand the distinction between rights and privileges. And you must understand birthrights cannot be sold in a commercial venue. Commerce means trade. And when you take a birthright and put it in a commercial venue, it's called slave trade. But of course, a person who doesn't know that doesn't know better. Because basically, when people don't know those basics, they're no different than boys and girls. And if somebody calls them boys and girls, they shouldn't be upset. They should understand that they're really giving you a hand. Letting you know, you know, like saying you got a boogie in your nose. No, don't be telling me I got a boogie in my nose and start, you know, don't get like that. Maybe think about maybe why they said what they said. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Now, make sure everyone has a copy of this. Please. Um, I'm going to move this um, so it can make it more. Now again, I'm going to qualify because a lack of a lack of space on the board. Um, this writ is more than what it appears to you. Although it's designed to, to interrupt the processes of foreclosure, and it's also designed, although it's not being said at this time, for later on what, it, what, what is known as um, quiet claim. Not quick claim deed, quiet title. Uh, in order for certain things to take place, there's certain principles that have to be already established with us as a people. And that is, one, you have to be national. Two, you have to be active. Three, you must be organized. Not that you can't do without that. Therefore, the groundwork must be set up for that function to take place. This is why Noble Drawley set up the more the old Canaanite temple more Holy Temple of Science and the more Science Temple of America. And because those institutions still exist, people are often unfortunately mistaken to think that because the buildings exist that the forum exists. The forum is a process of action. If we're having a meeting, right? We got a meeting right now? Or if you went to some meeting, meetings are, don't exist for themselves. Meetings exist for something to be done that changes the condition of why you went to the meeting for. And what you find in many organizations presenting to us, we go to meetings to go to meetings. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I see that. I hope it's not confusing, right? All right. Meetings are to dispense information or to motivate for something different to be done than what you're doing. Do you understand? We've gotten caught up in the cycle of going to meetings, cheering, patting each other on the back, feeling good, moonwalking out the door, a little lighter, think we're spirituals, just that we're broke. You know, and stuff like that, and feel good. You're here to get information to effectively make change, to empower you. So I'm telling you ahead of time. That's why I say take notes, all right? Um, and I honestly know that a lot of things that we might say 
you, you know, might enter and certain things, you know, ride over for the moment, but that's fine. But pay attention to the details, to the subtleties, because I already know that uh, you can't fix something overnight, but if you can make sure that people have their basics, it doesn't matter who they run to, meaning they can go to California and use these, this foundation. At the same time, my true desire is to cut short the process of your development as you come into this new world order. Because as you come, and you have no choice, I'm letting you know already, there's people on both sides that's ready to rape you. And if you understand that, one, don't be surprised, don't be disappointed, don't be distracted. And don't think that because somebody screws you that you jump off the boat. Because all you're going to be is fodder. You're going to be fertilizer for what's going to take place one way or another. Meaning, truthfully, there's no way out. Do you understand? So it's in your interest, if somebody's giving you this information, to listen and to pay attention. Because I'll be honest with you, most people are not going to tell you straight. They'll tell you in a roundabout way in order to leave a little pocket there so they can line their pockets off of you while you're learning. Knowing that two, three years down the road, you probably ain't going to have a relationship when you find out they played you. But meanwhile, they get paid. <laughs> Do you understand? Do you understand? All right. If you understand what I'm saying, don't say you do and you don't. So I'm, I'm being front with you where I'm coming from. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. All right. It doesn't mean shut out other information. I'm only giving you a solid foundation so you can accept whatever information you get and be able to separate the wheat from the chafe. The bull Shitsky dwarf from that which is real. You'll get no truth without its admixture of falsehood. But you must know for fundamental rules so that you can, you can become a refiner. Just like soap, you know, you jump in the pool, but you still take a bath when you get out. But yet you say the water ain't dirty, if you get the point. Same thing, all right? If you're gonna get gold out of the ground, you gotta learn how to refine that ore, don't you? And what's thrown off is called dross, isn't it? And then you get the jewels, you get the silver, the gold, the precious metals. Do you understand? All of which may be in some yards of dirt. However, there may be one particular mineral that you're mining for, but you don't neglect the other minerals just because you're mining for a particular mineral, right? If you're going fishing, right? Yeah, I'm going fishing. We're gonna get some codfish. And pull it. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> tuna, oh, you ain't throwing them back. Same thing, get the whole point? Hmm? So, in the world of politics, when you're dealing with economies and nations, you're going to pull things in or you're going to do things, right? And you're going to get good and you're going to get bad. Do you understand? Right. Some good things you're not going to be looking for, but don't throw them away because that ain't what you're looking for. But some bad things you're going to get with the good things. Learn to take it off and throw it away. Get the whole point? I mean, that, put it this way. You ain't necessarily into throwing, frying starfish. You might throw the starfish back. You might not be in octopus, but maybe somebody on the streets eats them. But get the same point. All right. Now, point. Let me let me get back because we were talking earlier, and I just want to bring y'all up to snuff since you just came in. Because the brother, and I'm sharing this with everyone, because everyone learns from this, and this is good because even when you all travel, these things, believe me, will help you greatly if you really just have a foundation. Um, Treaty Verona. 1213 is a treaty made between King John of England and Pope Innocent III, Pope of Rome. You must understand that um, the collective body of the church universally is known as the bishopric. All right, that would include the, the popes, the cardinals, the whole gang. You must understand there's one church on the planet. And all other churches are simply protesting daughters that broke off from time to time competing for whatever they were stealing. We're talking real politi politics of the world. Do you understand? The basis of the world's politics, and particularly what you know in modern times as slavery, which is a modern occurrence, it's not an ancient occurrence. 
Slave, the word slave comes from Slovakians when Russia went into Slovakian nations and overtook them. And so the Slovakian nationality, it's in the territory, was loosely used connotatively relative to someone being subjugated. Do you understand? And so the word slave came, was derived from Slovakian and used connotatively. However, that's not the denotative meaning. When they reconstructed history, due to the fact that they're maintaining servitude, particularly in the Western Hemisphere, under these treaties, etc., they started using that word loosely, and our people being thrown with that word being thrown around, take that word and put it retroactively in Asiatic history, and then try to talk like they're talking African history and stuff like that, and they're lying because it doesn't go beyond. That period is totally modern. Scholars would know that, but logically people who don't know better, who, you know, get caught up in emotionalism about history and sociology, you know, boast, yes, and the black African slave of the technicality and the Nile River is building pyramids and the black gods of Egypt. Oh, scholars know it's all fraud because no such black people exist on the planet. Because anybody's black is slaves. Connotated slaves, branded by European conquerors, Dutch masters who came to the North Territory, and branded the defeated Moors, Negroes, Blacks, and Colors to divide them against each other to identify chattel property from nationals in order to do what? To justify human chattel property. As soon as you admit to one of them, logically, the Christian black codes automatically come in by your own admittance. It's called a world contract. That's how it serves. You, you know, got to know how it functions. Does it mean that our people weren't called those words? No, it doesn't mean they weren't called those words. Does it mean that they are those words? No, they're not those words. In the law of evidence, in identity, as soon as you claim to be somebody you're not, you're out of the box. If you understand those rules, you understand what nationality serves on a political realm for foundation to begin to claim a right. We ain't talking about claiming right to begin to have the capacity to claim a right. And logically, when you see different people that got different agendas, they want to admit to that because it ain't going to make them like that. Can't get your lunch money. Plus, they can't do little clubisms to try to suppress the truth. See, because once a person, natural, has certain basic truths, the beginning of that freedom starts there. And it's hard to enslave, connotative, an educated person. You gotta kill them. But if you can control their mind and reading material, etc., this is why the Christians burn books. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Then you can set them up what? For fodder, for fuel, chattel property. You see? Now, the mortgages that they've been issuing to our people are called chattel mortgages. It's covered up by just saying that they're prime loans. But the prime is derived from prime beef. The word chattel is derived from cattle, which simply means movable property, fixed and movable, which would include living beings. Do you understand? The 14th Amendment was established by radical, non-radical Republicans to disguise the issue of the transference of emanumated Moors who were branded black to give the impression that they were free to stop the wars during the Civil War period, as that stuff was leading up to that. Do you understand? This is why they started the Freedman's Bureau and closed it very shortly within about a four-year period. Why? Because then they dealt with what, the, what is known as the original Article of Amendment 13, which um, Article 12 within that law um, clearly states that persons of African descent cannot be U.S. citizens. They couldn't have that because it would have exposed that they were corporate citizens, corporate persons. That's why they hid it and then created the 14th Amendment to cover up the 3rd Amendment, 13th, original Article of Amendment, and then they created the 15th to cover up the 14th, all of which was never properly ratified, but it did serve the purpose of dumbing the people down. That's why Drawley said you're not Negro, Black, and Colored. 
and the 14th Amendment is not necessary for the salvation of my people and the citizens. However, you don't study history and law, you won't recognize the relationship because he's just making statements. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And you look at it whether or not you believe it or not, and it's irrelevant what you believe. It's what the real history and law is. And if you don't understand it, one, you don't know the motives of Europeans when they act certain ways to you. And you don't like my color. Most of our people think color is an identity. It's a classification. Legal classification. It means artificial persons. It means fake. Fronting. <coughs> Fraud. And you know, we people of color got rights. Yeah, you think so? Do you understand? So I'm giving this to you to give you some little subtleties of understanding what's in the backdrop of the canvas of people in sociology and in social engineering, what they know about you that you don't know about yourself. And when you start about nationality and you don't have this basic foundation background, they already know you out to lunch. And you went down 7-Eleven, copied this stuff. <laughs> and logically, they already know when they challenge you, you can't defend it. Yeah. See, because right here it says, I'm a Moorish American, and and then half the words on there they don't they can't even de they can't even define them in law. And the real deal is upon the challenge. You don't need the paperwork. It's supposed to come right just in a smooth conversation. You know, it's sort of like you graduate from, like you graduate from um, what 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 elementary school you went to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, I ask you, how much is two and two? Say wait a minute. Anybody bought your cell phone? <coughs> hey, teach. How much two and two? Four. Would I be impressed? What's up, brother? Four. And it's not that you would stop the conversation, but you would know I'm incompetent. Same way when you need a paperwork to affirm your nationality. And if it ain't coming natural, it's cool, but you ain't competent yet. Don't start fights. Smack Goliath and he's going to smack you back. It ain't about whether you're fair or not. Don't <laughs> Hey, G, man, you got my stuff, G. Better be, be start ducking, and he's not gonna let you be pulling out stuff talking about. Oh wait, wait a minute! Let me tell you this part right here. Cause my board gave me this paper. See, I got my documents here. Whoa, well, G! It don't work like that. G you already know this. That's why they have secret societies. The fact that you don't know that this is what's taught in secret societies don't change it. It was a law. Ain't no excuse because it starts with you. And this is a really why people underestimate this information, because they think it's a belief system. And often it's presented as a belief system. <laughs> you understand? It's really world law, politics, etymology, language, science, culture. So what's run this planet. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, They took your birthright. Certainly, they know it. So they're not going to sit and tell you, oh, let me tell you, oh, whew. You just found out. Let me give you your cookies back. Pack them with stuff. I don't think it's going to work like that. Do you? All right. So this is the foundation. Also, in a, this is about 1884-1885. And that's where the European nations came together to also decide on the residuals of the Moorish Empire, which they will list in history also as the Ottoman Empire, residuals, including the hybrids. Do you understand? On the vestiges of what they conquered from you. And understand all their politics is based on the knowledge of this, meaning their motivation is coming from documented knowledge. It's not coming from emotionalism. They're not going to have this conversation with you. However, they act on it. Being Moorish American and being properly educated through the temples or wherever institution you might come from, you should at least know this stuff. 
We're talking about in the civic realm because that involves national principle. Because if, if you don't deal with this, you'll become a beggar nation and you can't fulfill the high spirituality in you, so you can chalk that up. So don't get twisted with these people saying, hey, spirituality. Hey. They're BSing you because they've cheated you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So I'm just trying to bring a balance, and I will really need you to understand that. Because um, I'm not dismissing your question, I'm satisfying it. But I'm taking you a little further, taking a little time to give you some foundation so that you can go on your own, gather up a little bit more information, so that no matter who you're being taught by, that whatever they give you, it becomes thoroughly useful, and you're not enslaved, connotatively, to the teacher. Do you understand? Because the information is yours. So I'm sharing with you, but I'm letting you know that what I'm sharing with you already belongs to you. Don't confuse it that, oh man, he's got the stuff, man. No. I know some things that need to be shared with you, which is why you're here, which is why I'm here. But I want it to be at any time in the future that if I don't feel like it, I can sit in the back of the room and you step up here, anybody in, in the room can. That's what I'm looking for. Because in the real world, that's what we need. That's where we need to be. Because it's a national problem. It's not an individual problem. The birthright belongs to the nation. It doesn't belong to individuals. So the concept of this information and this dispensation should be dispensed properly so that you're not subordinated to anyone. Now, do you understand what I'm saying about paperwork and nationality? Yes. All right. Doesn't mean that you don't use it. Don't mean that you don't seek it but I'm putting you in a proper frame of mind. But I say this to you, you can get it from anywhere, whether it's European, Asiatic, et cetera, and you can clean it up because your concepts will be right. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. All right. Now, this is the writ that shut down the banks in all 50 states. Now, what I did, I updated it because people have been calling from all around the country concerning it. Well, where do you, you know, how do you fill it out? I mean, of course, it's, it's really basic. So what I did from its original form, I expanded on each one of the questions in the discovery and disclosure. And I, I put in examples of where you would place your name, where you would place the banker or the lender's name, etc., to simplify it, to reduce people's questions. And I, but I also say that um, I put it on, on the website to make it available to people across the country because logically the Barristers Association are not going to free the people because they're part of the problem. And um, a lot of the Asiatics who claim to be working for Nova Drali, unfortunately, are agents for Rome. And it's an uncomfortable truth, but it's still the truth and the deal. It's not going to do any good bouncing around it and trying to act like it's not there. If we're going to help the people, we've got to tell the truth. Even when we're stepping in doo-doo, if you get the point. And so I put it on the website to make it available to anybody for free, knowing that some people would fill it out and didn't know, not know how to defend it. But the real issue was to stop the process, meaning if, if, if someone's falling, the first thing you want to do is stop the fall or break the fall or do whatever you can to reduce the injury. Then we start dealing with the issue. So the person's natural themselves have to have some kind of inspiration to want to start studying, to start taking responsibility for their own affairs. Thus, you must prepare yourself to take your places in the affairs of men. This is the reason why years ago, Moore set up the Moorish National, uh, the, the uh, um, Great Seal National Association of Moorish Affairs, for Moors who respected the national side of the movement counter to the agents that infiltrated the movement. It's not different, it's just enforcing a part of the movement that has been subverted deliberately and hidden as if it's not part of the Moorish movement. So you don't get caught in battling, get caught in understanding it. And don't think that when you reclaim a birthright, which is really the politics of the world, that you're not going to have opposition, because you absolutely will. And so the best thing that anyone who's sharing this information with you can do is to make sure that your foundation is solid so that even though you take blows, at least you'll still be standing to survive the storm that's sure to come. Meaning that, because this, this represents over for them. This represents end game. There's a lot of issues that, that are other than this. 
But the nature of this writ represents end game. Those who know law and government recognizes it immediately. And it doesn't mean you don't recognize what's on it. But essentially, it's end game. Do you understand? The principles that's behind this writ applies in so many other areas that you may not immediately recognize, but Rome would recognize it immediately because he's got your birthright. The problem has been mainly is that most of the people didn't know what questions to ask. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? All right, <clears throat> now I'm going to qualify this again. Um, in law, in human sociology, in human interchange and intercourse, when there's a controversy in law, or treaty or property or grants or land, etc. Um, I'll make it simple. Sis, Ada, like them boots, sis. And you know they sis with boots, right? They my boots. I'm telling. So I go tell somebody, well, <laughs> she took my boots, man. I'm following take your boot charges. So I Filed charge, claim took, took my boots, right? So you issue a warrant, right? Right? In law, for you to have moved to court against her, I must have introduced into evidence proof that the boots are mine. Before you can issue, it's called a sworn affidavit. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's embodied in the Bill of Rights in the Fourth Amendment. That rule is called a rule of discovery, whereas she has a right to all information that moved to court in the first place for us to even summons her. Forget whether or not she took the boots. That's called discovery. Are right, you understand? That's why it's called discovery. That applies to anything, no matter what the subject matter is. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I accuse you, you have a right to discovery. Why do you have discovery? You have discovery because you have a right to prepare a challenge to defend yourself, am I correct? Hmm? That's right. I.e. face your accuser, right? Huh? Discovery. Now, there's another rule in law, it's called disclosure. It's in contract law. In order for there to be a debt or an obligation, some contract must exist. Think about the contract. Oh, talk so. Introduce the contract. I'm not saying did. Ain't saying I did. No, it's, it ain't, no, it ain't like that. What's the contract? So now it's discovery and disclosure. Am I correct? Once discovery, which is an exercise of right, not a privilege, this is not a motion. It's an exercise of a right. Remember, a motion comes under the auspices of the court as a privilege, which, which can be dismissed. You understand? Or not acknowledged, not based on its merit, but just based on whether the judge wants to dis dismiss it or not. It could be right as ice cream on our day, if you're in ice cream. And he can dismiss it simply because it's a motion. However, if it's an affidavit, it must be rebutted. It's not his option to dismiss. An affidavit of fact or an affidavit. And writ of discovery. It's like an affidavit. It must be rebutted. It cannot, the court has no option to dismiss it. They must answer it. And if they don't answer it, they're in default. Are we clear? We clear? Clear. All right. If they're in default, the court can't move. Not only that, if they're in default, the court is obligated to dismiss. You see where it's going? Huh? Now, if there's some proceeding, and then there's some information that's disingenuous, etc., that wasn't revealed in the discovery, which means non-disclosure, everything stops. It must be thrown in the trash. Are, 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 are you with me? That's what the discovery is. Now, <clears throat> this is aside from the point that we can go into some more information about chattel mortgages, etc., Sister Q Trust, etc. So we're going to talk, in essence, what occurs in general across this country, in the Western Hemisphere in particular, wherever European colonists are ruling, claiming to be Americans, which they are not, they're Europeans.
They claim to be Americans because they're stealing your birthright. You understand what I'm saying to you? This is also why you must collect, correct your language when you're co co communicating with them. But in all Americans, it's, no, you're not American. No big deal. Correct it because they set up a false foundation. As soon as you accept it, then they can introduce false law. Because first issue is the status. And once you understand these rules, this is back to understanding paperwork. Understand that your foundation must be grounded. Do you understand? You got one of these, brother? Now, in order to get you involved, and if you don't mind, I'll come up and read the first one, because when you came in with your bright eyes looking like, ah, swell, what are you talking about? I want you to <laughs> come up and read this. Now, the best way to kind of understand this is to get you involved, so everyone's going to take a moment to read different parts, then we'll analyze it, all right? You read the first one, once you read the second one, because, you, because when you first came in, your eyes was the brightest. Mm -hmm. Sis came in, she's like, what the uh, swell? You know, so, plus it, you'll absorb it better. And then, it'll, and remember, a lot of times, just like you, you ask questions, the brother asks questions. When you ask questions, no question is wrong. And do ask questions because it draws us out to, to pull up to the front of us to defend what's here. But understand, and I'm going to qualify myself again, Everything that this represents is not here, but you must understand what it represents and you will, they're looking at you like that. Because remember, every writ is a brief, just like a, a card, a nationality card, an ID card, it represents a whole body of other information. And if they come at you with the body of information and it ain't on the paper and you don't recognize it, they know that you don't know what's there. You're incompetent. You see? So like I'm saying to you, hey man, you know, like um, one and one is two. And I'm waiting for y'all to applaud. <clears throat> two and two is four. You know, and then y'all won't applaud. I'm wondering why y'all ain't impressed. In law, guess what? Same thing. If you don't understand status and you don't even know that you don't understand status, they ain't going to argue with you. Oh, they're going to go like this. Oh, please. Shut up while you're ahead. You better get a lawyer. Why? Probably name Brown. You've got a European name, transacting business, and don't even know your status is neutralized. You sit up here talking stuff, talking about rights and everything, and people of color. They ain't going to argue with you. They're going to put a barrister on you because you're using their name. You're getting ready to get taxed. Meanwhile, you're talking about, see, they racist because they didn't want black men had nothing. Black men are slave. There's no human beings. That doesn't apply to human beings. It applies to chattel property. And guess what? If you didn't know, that's on you. There's 14th Amendment. What, you didn't know you thought that was real? Well, you knew Jesus. I know you know this. You knew Muhammad. You made Salat. I know you know this. You know, it goes in the, in the Bible, Quran, all the holy books when it says, Man claiming to know a God he do not see and do not love his brother he see every day. He's a fraud. Applies in law. I know Muhammad said I made it for life. I know Jesus. You can't get crossed down without getting profiled and know how to fight it? I don't think so. Get the point? In law, you're held to that standard. Now read from the top. You don't have to read that. This is, you know, this up the top is where you put your name, you know, your attribute and then the, the party to whom is claiming to be a surety holder. Read the first <laughs> paragraph, read it slow, read it loud. Act like, mm -hmm. act like your baby's here. Okay. Baby's five years old, you know what I mean? Yeah. Young baby, right? Yeah. But you really want them to understand it because in 10 years, he and she's already a target. Because a few more years after that, then they coming down on them hard like a rock because they ain't gonna let them compete. So it's better that you get it to them early. Do you understand? Because yeah. there they ain't thinking that they chattel property. Because you told them they was black. They proud. They have no idea that that's a classification. It's a caste system. Status is first issue of law. 
Read it and then break down what you think you know about it. Please mail or deliver to the borrower your attribute, name, the following pertinent evidence, produce the originals or certified and verified official copies of the original loan, related documents, including all papers, electronic communications, and emails, etc. As stipulated by law, all of these loans related instruments adversely affect the associated case number 0000-00000. Any name, bank, or its assigned are requested to schedule a timely meeting and opportunity for me, my counsel, and slash or my CPA to make a thorough physical inspection of the loan related documents so as to enable the borrower and his or her counsel or CPA to physically examine, to verify, to confirm, and to witness the same, to rebut or rebuke any mistake, to compare our information and to correct the same for the record. Now stop right there. Now, you must understand that that first paragraph is based on the law of contracts. For them to have moved the court, they must have introduced a claim to the court in order to get what is known as a writ of execution. That means throw your butt out. You understand? So you're asking for it. In law, there's not supposed to be any proceedings with you, without you having had that information in the first place to prepare a defense. Discovery is required that they deliver that information to you and whatever they're doing, they must postpone it in due time for you to prepare a defense. You just ask for the contract and you didn't leave any doors open. You closed all the windows, closed all the doors. You put caulk in the crack over there. Hmm? You put steel wool in the mouse hole. And that's what that first paragraph sets up in the process. And guess what? They're obligated to answer to that. If they fail to answer to that, whatever they moved in that court by law, we're not talking about what they've been doing, must stop immediately. And we ain't talking air brakes. We're talking about air brakes last year. You understand? They know that most people don't know that because most people aren't told that. So they know that you're not going to exercise that right, most likely, because you're going to sit around talking about the emotions, the amount, and then getting the second job and all that stuff right into the subject matter when you shouldn't even be talking subject matter. Because the grounds upon which the court was moved is now being established. You just indirectly challenged the jurisdiction and it must be answered. But it doesn't say challenging the jurisdiction, does it? But then you must know that. Same principle that I'm telling you about nationality. You see the point? Huh? Brother? See the point? All right. So. I'm using this as a, as a multi-level teaching tool to put you in the right concepts because it only not just deals with a mortgage. It deals in principle. So this is, this is nationalization. This is called a nationalization act. But you need to know that without me saying it. And if you don't recognize that, you're thinking that nationality is some other kind of process, me giving you some papers and putting your name on a card. No. And it's not that those things don't occur. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But that's really not nationalization. This is nationalization. Education is nationalization. A oh, card or something like that is what is called consummation of a limited process of nationalization. Meaning that like in a political, in a political forum, like say for instance, like say um, I'm, I'm, I'm here right now, right? So I came here from West Philly but I also came from Jersey. And like I said, these was nations, right? So I'm coming in, yeah, man, I wanna be a citizen and stuff. You wouldn't nationalize me. You would naturalize me, unless I'm of the same bloodline. Now, if I'm naturalized, I'd have limited rights to appearances of citizenship, but they would be limited. So therefore, all the conditions and the status of the beings must all be clarified for the record before you even process begin. It ain't no such thing, I want this and you just get it like that. I would be tested on civic principles. 
on top of being tested by my own constitution because that's how we interchange. Because consular principles are always in order when you have diversity of citizenship, which is described in Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution. Of course, you would know that if you learn from the temple to enforce the Constitution. These are little, I'm just throwing these things out at you, showing you how they're all involved, though you don't see it. Understand that the Magi's know this already because they took your birthright. They already know what's missing. They already know why you're hurting. They already know why we're economically screwed. Because it took your birthright. You think Drawley was kidding when he told you that they're living off your virtues? What do you think is just some kind of attitude? They're dealing with law. Even though it's color of law. But you better know the difference between color of law and du jour law too. Because once you throw papers out there, you must be defending them. And so when they come at you, they're going to be coming at you on an angle like I'm talking to you right now. But yet it's not written there. But yet this is represents what I'm talking. And then some other stuff. So therefore, that's nationalization. The essence of it. The, what you call the breath of it. The spirit of it. You see? And then if you get the breath of it, the spirit of it, then this, many other people, somebody give you, you can tear it apart like an, oh yeah, mm -hmm. you see, you can change this, you can fix this right here because that's counters right there. This neutralizes the wrong jurisdiction here. You, just, you, can, you can understand those things because you know the rules. Do you, you understand? That's what I'm getting across to you. I'm only using this on a multiple level to, to share with you, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, now, what do you know about that? I mean, what do you see? What do you see? Get some out. Just talk freely. Stop. Put that down. Out your face. Talk freely. Remember our babies here. Remember your baby's still my baby, and my baby's still your baby. They are. Because when you're a nation, because really that's what it is. In real, in the real world. This is why nationals, when they come here, they don't have to like each other. But what they don't do is violate national principles, because they know we're one family, having one free national name. Now, you understand why other people come here and make economic success in short order and our people can't figure it out? Because yeah. they don't know national principles. Do you understand? But yet they're expected of you. And you don't have them. That's on you. After all, you said you knew Jesus. You know Allah. Well, then you damn sure know this. And if you don't, ain't nobody going to sit around and babysit you. They're going to live off of you. You know, you go jumping in the pool talking about... Yeah, man, because this is our pool coming to my backyard. This is my pool. You say, oh, Tachi got it. Dang, world was kind of dark. That's natural. It's kind of stinky.